Hello and welcome to today's video, my name is Joseph. I hope everyone's doing well today. For the reason of last week's missed upload, I was unwell, hence the non-upload. Couldn't speak. Coughing. A little cold. Anyway, that now that I'm a bit better, let's get into it. So I'm doing a slider bar, this is stuff that you could use for your audio sliders and that. Before I get into it, you guys are amazing, you have no clue. This will be up on the Google Drive, the usual stuff. So, let's get into into it. So what have I created? This is what I've created. I'm just going to load it up and show you guys. This is a slider bar. As you can see, I can slide to the min, to the max, the usual stuff that you'd expect. The way this works is fairly straightforward, at least I think it is. And I'm going to show you guys, again, the fun problem with good old Game Maker Spacing. So what I've done is you'll actually notice I haven't actually set a sprite for this. I'm actually doing it a slightly different way. I'm using the mask index function to set the slider bar, which is this object here, as the mask app, oh, mask of the object. Uh, next thing I'm doing is I'm actually storing the X position <clears throat> of the object, then I'm storing both the sprites. Next thing I'm doing is I've just got a um, slider click um, false. That's for later, and I'll explain why you need it, because otherwise it acts jittery. Uh, the next part is I actually store the width of my slider box. And this is important because it means I can dynamically change the slider and I'll size and I can show you guys that in a little bit. The next part here is I pull the position of the slider. So this is the bar itself that's going to move along. And the position is equal to the X start position of one half of the width of image. So that calculation basically should always center it. And the next part is I'm just pulling a percentage value. <clears throat> the next thing I'll show you guys is the draw function. So the draw is not spectacularly complicated. I draw sprite zero, which is my bar, and then sprite one, which is my um, background. The background has a position set permanently where the bar does not. And the last part here is I just draw the text. So the text is just drawing um, to its position plus its width. So the, the original position plus the width of the sprite to then add 12 pixels plus 6y. So that brings it down a little bit. And then I go string bracket round, um, my slider percentage multiplied 100, close bracket, close bracket plus string percentage sign. This just shows you it as a um, percentage value because it's a point value and then the round just gets rid of the decimal points. The next fun part, the, the slightly more complicated aspect of how this all runs. Let me see if I can get some extra space here. I always feel like game makers I'm pillaging all my spacing right now. Oh come on game maker, play with me here a little bit. There we go. Okay. So, what I have done here is my first step of code is I'm checking for a mouse click plus the position. Super important, if you don't set the mask, you won't get a position return because there's no mask to collide with. So make sure to set the mask, either way by setting an image or by doing what I did there. Um, then I just basically flag the click as true. So if you don't do that, what will happen is because when you move your mouse, you move faster than the repositioning of the object, it will eventually de-click off the object and it will be very stuttery. Doing it this way locks the click to being true, meaning that it will follow, running through the next step of code here, and then at the end you can see I've got a release, which means when I release my mouse button, it reflags it as false so it no longer follows. A bit convoluted, but it works really well as you saw. And I'll put this up in the Google Drive so you guys can play with it. Uh, the next aspect here is once the, the click is true, I take the slider bar X is greater than or equal to the slider bar position X. So all intensive purposes, this is zero on the scale. The next part is, is I use um, the AND function or double AND to then verse my slider bar X versing its maximum position which is position X or the starting position plus the width. And then if it's within these two bounds, it will move X slider bar will be then equal to mouse X, which means it will move along. 
The next really important thing here, and I totally forgot this when I last programmed one of these, but I spent the past half an hour trying to remember. This will actually tip the value by one pixel over, breaking it. Key important thing to do. At the bottom here, you can see I've got two if statements. One designed for the minimal value, which just basically says if it's less than this pos the starting position, it's going to trip it back up to the start, which means it cannot go past negative one. Oh, sorry, um, zip, negative zero for this for this purpose here. And the same for the larger aspect. So if it trips over the larger size, it resets itself to the maximum size that it can go. The last part here is there's two more equations down here. One is for the calculation of the percentage. So the percentage is calculated off. So we should all know how to do percentage here, I hope. Um, but normally it would just be the percentage bar or the slider bar divided by our total. Because we need to zero this value out, so this needs to be from zero to 100, we take our bar x minus our position start, which then creates basically a zero or a null, null point to begin with here. And then we can divide by our width, giving us our percentage. The last value is the x is equal to slide bar x, which is nothing, fa that just basically ties it into the mouse move. It's just the end, end tag of it. So that is the slider bar. Now, one of the cool things with this one in particular is if I go in here, and you can see here I've got a nice big bar. If I go edit, oh, no, not, not that kind of edit, this kind of edit, and I change it to, let's say, 128, and untick that. Okay, I don't know why I did that. I wanted that to be 32. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I just learned something in the Game Maker edit function. Let's go edit image. Let's just fix up this edging a little bit. I also learned that apparently there's two different sides there today. So I'm learning lots of things in the editing system today. If I do that, in theory, you guys would expect me to need to go and re-edit functions. But because of the way I've programmed this, the system is dynamic, which means it actually scales based on whatever size you set here. Because height's not a factor here, it's just linearity, and linearity is the important side here. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It should have been a nice quick tutorial, it looks to be about 8 minutes long. Join the Discord, you guys are amazing. The usual, I can't appreciate you guys enough as you know. And I will see you guys next time. See us later.